All right, so misused words and phrases. The Elements of Style by William Strunk, the classic text. All right, so now we're on T's. Thanking you in advance. This sounds as if the writer meant it will not be worth my if will not be worth my while to write to you again. In making your request, write, will you please, or I shall be obliged. And if anything further seems necessary, write a letter of acknowledgement from later. All right. Uh, okay. So thank you in advance. Yeah. I mean, you know, this this is more like a formal letter between friends or colleagues or, you know, trying to apply for a job or whatnot. I mean, you know, that's a totally separate discussion. As far as academic writing, it probably won't come up. All right. So they. A common inaccuracy is the use of the plural pronoun when the antecedent is the distributive is a distributive expression such as each, each one, everybody, every one. Many a man, which, though implying more than one person, requires the pronoun to be in the singular. Similar to this, but with even less justification, is the use of the plural pronoun with the antecedent anybody, anyone, somebody, someone. The intention being either to avoid the awkward he or she, or to avoid committing oneself to either. Some bashful speakers even say, a friend of mine told me that they, etc. Use he with all the above words, unless the antecedent is or must be feminine. Okay, so, um, a friend of mine told me that they, so you generally don't want to say that. You want to say use, he, you want to use he, unless the antecedent is or must be feminine. That really, that, that makes sense, right? A friend of mine told me that they blank. You want to be specific, right? Um, you normally want to use he. You know, again, this is, this is, uh, you know, it's just, it's just the way the writing works. Um, it's, you know, it's, I don't think it's necessarily sexist. I don't want to get into like sexism discourse. Um, we could write an essay on it though. And I'd love to read it. Um, um, especially if it's well-written, but yeah, I mean, I, I love, I love well-written, cogent, you know, defended, uh, well-evidenced essays and arguments, but it is what it is. It's just saying use he with all the, the all with all the above words unless the antecedent is or must be feminine. So if it's a she, if it's for sure a she that you're referring to, a friend of mine told me that she blank, right? Um, if it's a she. So otherwise use he. So very use this word sparingly. You guys probably know this by now. Um, especially in academic writing. Use it very sparingly. <laughs> As I use the word very. Revisus and extra use words strong in themselves. Yeah, that's that's important. You know, you want to pick Words that are dynamic and active and strong. Um, you know, if if you want to speak ill of of certain language, you know, you use the word pedestrian. If you want to say, oh, it's you don't want to speak ill of it. You want to s state something neutral. That's sort of a neutral perspective on on a particular style of writing. You would use the word colloquial. Because colloquial isn't like a, a disparaging word. It's not a, a negative word that's trying to bash whoever's, you know, speaking. But if you say something as pedestrian or base, um, that's negative, you know. So, again, you don't want to use very. You want to choose words where emphasis is necessary. Use, use those strong words. So, all right, viewpoint. Right point of view, but do not misuse this. So, viewpoint. Do not misuse this as many do for view or opinion. His viewpoint, her viewpoint. I don't necessarily think that's a big deal. I've seen it a lot. Um, I don't know. Maybe, it, you know, I don't know. I, I, I don't believe that that's a huge deal. Um, a lot of people do use the word viewpoint um, for view or opinion. Um, I've seen it as the, the title of many editorials, um, like weekly editorials. So, uh, yeah, maybe this wasn't popular back in the early 1900s, but maybe it, it's, it's, you know, become adopted now in our, our lexicon. But anyways, all right. So while avoid the indiscriminate use of this word for and, but, and although many writers use it frequently as a substitute for and or but either from a mere desire to vary the connective or from uncertainty which of the two connectives is the more appropriate. In this use, it is best replaced by a semicolon. Okay, so let's look at bad and good. So bad, apparently. 
according to Strunk. The office and sales rooms are on the ground floor, while the rest of the building is devoted to manufacturing. The office and sales rooms are on the ground floor, semicolon. The rest of the building is devoted to manufacturing. Yes. So, <clears throat> this is an interesting one. I'm sure I've made this mistake many times. I'm sure most of you have made this mistake many a times. Um, I'm sure most people have made this mistake many a times. But this is, you know, this is from, from Strunk. He's saying, look, it shouldn't be indiscriminately, which means like wantonly, just recklessly, like egregiously, like, um you know, being used, replaced for and, but, and although. So here the semicolon is helpful. Um, also, it has a little bit more more punch um, with the semicolon. Its use as a virtual equivalent of although is allowable in sentences, but this leads to no ambiguity, which is uncl unclarity, la lack of clarity, um, you know, uh, or absurdity. Um, while I admire his energy, comma, I wish it were employed in a better cause. This is entirely correct. I admire his energy, semicolon. At the same time, I wish it were employed in a better cause. Yeah. Compare. While the temperature reaches 90 to 95 degrees in the daytime, the nights are often chilly. Although the temperature reaches 90 or 95 degrees in the daytime, the nights are often chilly. Again, Although is so much clearer when you're, you know, when you're looking at the meaning. So if you're trying to remember this, you're like, okay, how am I going to remember this? It seems so simple to to forget. Um, then I think that you know the the clarity aspect will would definitely help. And just the word while. So you know you you want while you want to think about that in terms of time. This happened while that happened. So, like, in terms of a temporal uh, relationship between objects or events or ideas, that's when you should use while. At least that's the thesis that I'm getting um, here in this section from Mr. Strunk. Uh, the paraphrase, the temperature reaches 95 degrees, 90 or 95 degrees in the daytime. At the same time, the nights are often chilly. Shows why the use of while is incorrect. Um... Yeah, because if you re rephrase it, okay, here, here he's helping us remember it. If you rephrase it and you say at the same time the nights are often chilly, that's that, that's unclear. It's vague. That's what they were talking about. He was talking about it here. The the ambiguity. Um, if it's 90, 95 degrees in the daytime, then at the same time it can't be. It can't be nighttime. So it's 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 ambiguous. It's unclear. It's a little bit vague. So if you can rephrase that that statement, you know, the, the paraphrase here, and it seems unvague, or it seems unvague, it seems uh, ambiguous or vague or unclear, then you should use, you should not use while, you should use although, uh, in this case, in this case. So in general, the writer will do well to use while only with strict literalness, which I mentioned earlier, with regards to time or during the time that you know, uh, the temporal relation or the the, the, the time uh, relation um, between objects or things or people, etc. Whom, often incorrectly used for uh, who, before he shed, said, or similar expressions when it's really a subject of the following verb. All right, so let's read the bad. His brother, whom he said would send him the money. His brother, who he said would send him the money. Good. This bad. This good. Left bad. To man whom he thought was his friend. The man who he thought was his friend. Or the man whom he thought his friend. Uh, this is practice. This, a lot of this is practice. Um, some people never get it. It's definitely one of those things that gets really confusing. People just throw their arms up in despair. And give up on learning English when they when they have to remember this stuff, um, and I, I I feel for you guys. It's 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 challenging, but just remember that you don't have to know everything. You know, in math, you've got to know most of the postulates, most of the rules. You know, to get to get an A. You know, in, in English, you really don't. You don't have to know every little thing. 
So, or, or, or to even perform well. You know, I, I don't even want to always talk about grades. I know that, you know, we're so focused on grades. You know, that's just how modern day societies work. And, and a lot of these, um, you know, um, you know, the job markets and all that stuff. And, you know, they're, they're just, they're factors. They're, they're not the factors, but they're, they're, they are, you know, a factor, um, which, you know, gets into, you know, more, more hallowed, hallowed schools. And then those hallowed schools might get you into more hallowed companies and increase your odds and all that stuff. And, but, you know, it's really all about learning for learning's sake. And so even if, you know, you don't always remember all of these, just say it's all right. It's all right. You're learning. You're, you're getting better. Hopefully you learn some of the stuff or you remember some of the stuff. But some of the stuff I understand if it's like hard to remember. You're like, I don't know his brother whom he would said was sending the money. We're going to go over who and whom and how to figure all that out a lot more thoroughly in a separate video. All right. So worthwhile. Overworked is a term of vague approval with not, like not worthwhile, of disapproval. Strictly applicable only to actions. Is it worthwhile to telegraph? His books are not worthwhile. His books are not worth reading. The use of worthwhile before a noun is indefensible. A worthwhile story. Indefensible. It's hilarious. Cannot be defended. I cannot defend you. If I was your lawyer, I could not defend you. All right, so here we are. The last word uh, is would. A conditional statement in the first person requires should, not would. I should not have su succeeded without his help. I should not have succeeded without his help. The equivalent is shall in indirect quotation. If you remember in the past tense, it should not would. He predicted that before long we should have a great surprise. To express habitual or repeated action in the past, past tense without would is usually sufficient. And from its brevity, from its shortness, its briefness, more emphatic. Bad. Once a year he would visit the old mansion. Good. Once a year he visited the old mansion. Yeah, it makes sense because it's more direct, right? He visited, it's direct. Um, but this is saying that uh, if it's habitual or, or, or repeated, without wood is usually sufficient. And because it's more brief and more direct, it's more emphatic. But it's saying that, you know, it's usually sufficient, which means that this on the left is still grammatically correct. Um, but saying that this is a little bit better. Um I, I would not have succeeded without his help. It's interesting because it's saying a conditional statement in the first person requires should, not would. And again, one of those things where if you got some really brilliant gr grammarian um, who you're working with or who's your boss or who's your, you know, or who's, you know, anywhere in, in your, your company's uh, hierarchy, um, they're going to respect you a lot because this is this is tough. I think I've made this mistake many a times. I would not have succeeded without his help. It's supposed to be, I should not have succeeded without his help. But, but before long, we should have a great surprise. Not we would have a great surprise. So it's interesting. I don't know how much of this, you know, I, I know from my personal subjective experience that most of this is right on in terms of, of use today, 100 years later. Um, but a few of these, I think, you know, are, are not necessarily as big deals um, in our in our day to day society and lexicon, etc. So I think this was helpful. Next, uh, we're going to go into spelling uh, in this treatise. All right, guys, thanks a lot.